Hey everybody, what's going on? Yeah, I was just doing a little bit of cleaning up in my uh, a couple of my configuration files here, and thought I'd just make a quick video here on my uh, shell setup and my terminal setup. Um, as you guys have seen before in my other videos, I had a pretty simple prompt. It just listed my host name and uh, had a blue arrow on it, basically. Um, which I kind of liked for a while, but I decided I wanted to go back through and just make my own and make it a little more to my liking. So um, I did that. I went through and changed up my terminal or my prompt a little bit. Um, changed the color scheme on my prompt to um, Groovebox. I really like the Groovebox theme. Um, watched a video from uh, the Linux cast, and he, you know, did his Groovebox uh, customization. I refuse to say the R word. So <laughs> forgive me, but uh, this is customization, and uh, he did the Groovebox theme. And I, you know, I've known of the Groovebox thing, and I've looked at it, but um, uh, I really, it's growing on me. I really like it, and uh, so that's what my uh, actually what my Vim theme is right now, and my terminal theme, and I just kind of switched everything over to that because um, I, I really, I'm really starting to like it. But anyway, so I kind of went through and I redid my my prompt and just created my own. Um, it's real simple. Um, I'm gonna create a video here. Um, in the next few days or so, um, kind of showing how to make your own prompt, how to customize it yourself. Um, I did have that video a while back about uh, ZSH, Oh My ZSH, and how you can install plugins and stuff without using Oh My ZSH. Um, but now I'm gonna, I want to kind of show you how you can, instead of even installing somebody else's, you can go through and create your own and have it your custom uh, prompt as well. So this is mine. It's real, ba basically real simple. Um, obviously, just the date and time here, um, user and host name here, and then over here we've got. Um, if I run a command like let's do ls, um, it shows time for the command, and then um, down here it shows my working directory. Right now I'm in home, so if I cd into, actually we'll just go cd into dot config. Um, then you can see over here it shows that I'm in home.config. Um, if we go back and I cd into scripts, which is a Git repository, um, then it'll show me right here. That's a real simple uh, uh, Git um, prompt there. It just basically tells me that I'm in a directory that is a Git repository. It doesn't tell me if it's uh, if it needs to be if there's any commits that need to be done or pushed or anything like that. It just basically tells me that I'm in a repository. Um, that's all I really wanted because um, I don't do a whole lot of stuff in uh, GitLab. I do have I do have some stuff over there, but I don't do a whole lot, so I'm not too concerned about uh, making sure it stays too terribly up to date. But anyway, so um, let's clear that. And yes, I know Control C will clear as much as typing clear, but uh, habit, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's it's real easy. Um, I use the uh, terminal for just about everything. Um, I don't use a GUI file manager. I just CD through my directories in the terminal, but when I do need to use a file manager, usually it's the Ranger file manager. Terminal based, real simple and basic, but um, it gets the job done. I really enjoy it. I really like it. You know, you can customize it to look how you want and everything, but um, it's it's real nice. I, I really enjoy it. Um, there's also another one I've been kind of <laughs> exploring it's called XPLR so uh, explore I guess um, but I've been looking at this one quite a bit it's real similar to Ranger but the workflow on it is quite a bit different so it's taken a little bit of getting used to but I'm really starting to like it um, I plan on putting a, another video out on these uh, file managers as well because um, I really don't see a whole lot of need for GUI file managers anymore and if uh, if you need a file manager, I think these are very sufficient if you even need to get into a file manager. Uh, but this one's kind of nice because it has a little help screen over here. kind of tells you what all your key bindings are and what you can do. Um, and then it lists your directories here. If you want to see your hidden, you just hit the period and it shows all your hidden directories as well. Um, so it's it's a real, it's a real nice um, um, manager. But it's not... Uh, it's not what I was wanting to do this video and go over. I just kind of wanted to show you my setup for um, as I was cleaning up my uh, ZSH config. So, um, see, well, we'll do Control L this time and see. Um, just clears the screen nice and easy. Um, actually, let's go back into Ranger here real quick. Um, if you look in my home directory, it's not real clean right now. Um, I'm going through trying to clean everything up. I've got about 92 um, hidden files and directories and everything in here. So. 
um, a little more than I normally like to have in my home directory. It's not a big deal. It's not hurting anything or anything like that. I just it's a little sloppy <laughs> for me. Um, but I was kind of going through and just cleaning things up. Um, and moving things around and I kind of show you what I did um, usually what you're gonna do um, is in your shell you're gonna have you know your bash RC or your ZSHRC or whatever um, since I'm running ZSH um, it'll run off the ZSHRC um, that's gonna be your configuration file and normally that's stored in your home directory um, I didn't want it there anymore so basically what I did is if we go to this other workspace here in your ZSH ENV file um, basically this is what ZSH environment pulls from to kind of know where to look for things. Um, I just created uh, this line right here export z.dir to home.config slash zsh. And this way, anything <clears throat> that, uh, like the history and all that stuff any files that it creates for ZSH are now going to be created instead of in my home directory they'll be created in my .config slash ZSH file and if we go down here and we do export xdg underscore config dot or underscore home that says for the xdg setup that um, to look for my any type of uh, config file that it can it'll put in the, in the uh, .config file instead of storing it in my home directory um, so this right here is going to look for all of my um, ZSH files and, dire and directories and everything in my .config file slash ZSH as opposed to looking in the home uh, home directory. So that basically got three or four different files out of my home directory here and if we go up and go to config and we go down you can see right here is my ZSH so if we're looking at here, we're home jake.config zsh. We go in here, I have my zcomp dump, which is all that garbage. Um, I have my zsh history, which is all the history of my commands. Um, and then we have my zshrc. So if we go into the zshrc here, um, I used to have everything, let's quit out of this for a minute. I used to have all my aliases and archive extract and all that in my zshrc, but it was starting to get kind of long. Um, and going in and finding stuff, while not difficult, it was kind of a nuisance. Um, so basically, all I've done in my ZSHRC is I basically have my exports here, which are like my browser and everything. So when I open something, it's Brave Browser. Um, my editor is NeoVim. Um, I've got my path here. Uh, but I also have right here, I source um, like all my aliases that were in my. ZSHRC are now right here in my Z or my home dot config slash ZSH slash aliases. So all my aliases I loaded up over to here, and then I just source those from my uh, ZSHRC. Same thing goes with the archive extract, um, which basically, if we uh, go here. This is just basically a, a command that uh, says basically in a, whatever kind of file it is, a tar file or a zip file or whatever else, if I hit EX and then that file it's going to extract um, as opposed to you know having to go through and figure out what kind of file it is and using unrar or tar or whatever else. Um, so I also have that and that's sourced here and so it, instead of having that in my CSHRC that pulls from there. Um, these if we look at, um, we go back to .config, I have a .zsh file here. And I went over this in my other video, but we'll take a quick look at it again anyway. I have all my plugins that I um, pulled from all my ZSH that I wanted, um, and all the themes that I liked, and I just loaded them into this .zsh file, or directory, and then I can, uh, pull them from, I can source them from there uh, without having to install all my ZSH and all the other stuff that goes along with it. So again, I, I kind of covered that in the other video and uh, that I have, but uh, so that's these, my uh, dot config, ZSH, the plugins, the timer plugin that you saw on the right side of my, on the side of my prompt here, 
a timer plugin that tells you the time on the commands. Um, that's that. Um, colored man pages. So when I look up, say, man ls, um, just makes it a little nicer to look at. So it colors the man pages. Um, and then I have auto suggestion, which obviously you know what that is, and auto highlight or syntax highlighting um, for commands and stuff like that. Um, these here are the different themes that I uh, have installed from oh my ZSH. Um, like I said, I think the uh, last one, the um, Gen 2 ZSH theme, was the one I was using for a while. Um, so actually, uh, you can see my prompt looks like that right now. So if I go down here and comment this out and then uncomment the Gen 2 and we write that and then we load that up again now we can see this is my new prompt so um, yeah but uh, I can so depending on which one I choose or which one I like then I can just uncomment it and uh, that's the one we'll go with but for right now I like the ones that I I created so we're gonna stick with those so and there we go so just like that so that's what that is. Um, this here is for autocomplete. When you're uh, typing everything, um, you have to have this section in there for the autocomplete, and it'll include hidden files. Um, set opt auto CD is so when I CD and if I want to CD into a file, I don't have to type CD dot config. I can just type dot config, and it will CD into it. Um, again, this is my prompt here. Um, I'm going to create a video, kind of going through the different uh, variables and stuff, or. Um, different things you can put in here to you know customize your prompt um, this is my git uh, status um, you see right here it shows the, the little git prompt I have that comes up um, on the right side of my my prompt there and then this uh, sin daemon was basically when I first was doing all this I was trying to figure out being on a laptop it's got the touchpad on it I was trying to figure out how to make the uh, <coughs> when I would type and touch the accidentally touch the touchpad, it would move the cursor and things. So it kind of do all kinds of stuff. So that was my workaround for for a while until I figured out the the real fix for it, which is a story for another day. <laughs> but um, and then down here we have the other, which is basically my uh, history file and stuff like that. Um, so it stores my um, command history and everything. Um, eval. This here is the Starship prompt um, that. It says it has to be at the end of your file, of your ZSHRC file, which is why it's not up here. I don't know how true that is. I haven't tried to move it up there to see if it actually changes anything or not. I haven't used it in a while, so I'm not too terribly concerned about it. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of that. It's it's nothing real exciting, but it's just kind of a good uh, idea of, in my opinion, a way to keep my. Uh, um, my file kind of clean. I'm. I hate to say I'm, you know, OCD about it because I'm really not. But I, it kind of bugs me when things get a little too carried away, and it was starting to get a little too long with the um, aliases and everything in there. And side note, I, I use Xmonad for my window manager, and if you go into the Xmonad config, well, here, let's uh, let's take a look here. So um, let's go into. Go to do, 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 dot x monad. Talking about having long configuration files. This is my x monad file, and it just keeps going and going and going and going. And working in this thing literally drives me insane. Um, some of them are extremely long, but uh, yeah. So that's just kind of that. I wanted to just kind of go over how I kind of keep things clean and. and uh, Try to do, try to keep things organized and just kind of my setup on how I have ZSH set to uh, move the uh, file location from my home directory and just how I kind of source things in there. Um, I'm really working on trying to, like I've said before in my other videos, I want to write my own stuff as opposed to installing. Um, so having these plugins here that uh, are from somebody else, I not that I don't trust them, but I really want to be able to write them myself um, and do it myself. And I'll learn. Um, I'll get there. But uh, 
Oh, that's, that's that. So I just kind of wanted to go over this with you. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope uh, maybe you can get a few suggestions out of it. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to go over a video here covering uh, a couple of the terminal file, ma file managers that I like and then also customizing your prompt um, to uh, make it look how you want uh, as opposed to taking somebody else's. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you keep uh, keep watching, and thanks for uh, thanks for checking out the video, and God bless. Have a good evening.